everyone. Welcome to a live lesson with me, Matt Stead. Where we're going to learn a beautiful piece of... Well, that sounds really egotistical because I what wrote it like. But we're going to learn a lovely piece of instrumental music today. And we're going to really dig into things like technique in terms of right hand technique and finger forming, um, short arm versus long arm, tone production, all that good stuff, as well as, as left hand fingering and a few other things as well. And by the end of it, you'll have hopefully a really nice piece that you can um, you can perform, which would be really, really great. So let's have a look through the comments, see who we've got here. Oh, loads of people. Welcome, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. <laughs> Silly Goose is here. Hi, Indrani as well. And Amanda. Oh, Amanda, cold up there in North Wales, I bet. Yeah, freezing down here as well. Um, all the fun stuff has gone as well. Like all the snow from earlier has just turned to slush. And now we've just got very, very cold rain. It's like, ugh. But uh, I'm sure it'll get better later on. Hi, Chris. Hi, Lynn. Hope you're all keeping well. Hi, Vicky. So, um, yeah, so it's hopefully, hopefully um, your fingers will be warm enough that we can we can make them work. The only thing is I find, in fact, I'll give you a little exercise in a minute. I find that sometimes in this cold weather, my fingers can be a bit harder to get moving. They just don't quite um, move with the same pace and, and kind of subtlety as, as they do when it's warm. So I'll show you something to help there as well. So, yeah, a bit. I bet Chris, I bet it's wow parky up there, isn't it? Up in Scotland. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Now, um, don't worry if it buffers a little bit at the start, guys. So um, it always takes a little bit of time just to settle down. I don't know why that is. Um, it, e Esther, who's um, a bit more technical, technically minded than me, suggested starting with some countdown timers. So I might look at that for the next session see if we can kind of use that to help the buffering at the start but it always settles down which is which is the which is the important thing so yeah um just a couple of notes um if you haven't already got the worksheets um i'll keep them up here in the top left corner but with something like this where it's kind of very, very small notation it will be better if you can download it and have it either printed off or in front of you so um oh hi steve hope you're keeping well mate no worries, you can watch back any any time, bud. So, um, yeah, so sheets are available to print in the description. So if you follow the link in the description, I think I put them in the comments at the top there as well. So you can um, print off and, and play along, which would be great. Hi, Jackie. So we're going to have loads of fun learning this piece today. Now, what I thought I might do is I'll just start with a little rendition. Now, it's always scary kind of um, doing live lessons because I can't do a hundred takes like I sometimes do for YouTube when I go wrong. So I'll um, I'll play the piece for you so you have an idea of how it sounds. But if it goes horribly wrong, um, please forgive me. You think I'd know it like the back of my hand. I used to play this one all the time live. But um, since the first lockdown during COVID, I think I've only had two concerts the entire time. So... I'm well out of practice for this one. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look then. I'll, I'll bring it to close up. Now, um, a couple of things to bear in mind. Um, because I wanted to show you this on close up so you can roughly see what my fingers are doing. Um, I'm playing this one with a strap and my ukulele is quite horizontal. Now, this is going to be one of those um, do as I say, not as I do. It was the only way I could work out to get to show you on video what my fingers are doing, basically. But when you do it, I'm going to get you to perform with the uke more at a 45 degree angle. That's going to be really crucial later on. So don't copy my bad habits as I'm playing this. This is just to give you an idea of how it sounds and so that you can see what's happening down here and hopefully up here a little bit as well. Okay, so let me just play a little bit of the piece for you. So. Thank you. 
we go guys so hopefully that didn't buffer too bad um and you get just an idea of the piece so um obviously what we'll do now is we'll break this down into into a lot of details um if anyone's interested this is um from uh, this is a piece that i did for the ukulele grades so um, it was on the RGT grades, which are like the international grades for ukulele. They got taken over by the London College of Music. So it's now called the LCM ukulele grades. And the cool thing about this one, and I want you to take this as a real kind of sign of encouragement, is this is actually one of the grade five pieces. And if you think grades go from one to eight, that's really high. Um, so if you can if you can do this one today, even like a little bit roughly, you're doing so well on the ukulele. So really take that as, as a bit of encouragement. Now, this version. Um, hi, Charlene. Hi, Angela. Oh, Laura's here. Hi, Laura. Hi, Peggy. Hope you're all doing well. Um, so this version is slightly different from the version in the grades, just to let you know. Um, and this is a purely kind of um, kind of music writer thing, I guess. When you write for publications like the grades, they like to make little changes because especially with the grades, they like to see um, specific techniques and timings and things like that. So they kind of mucked about with my original piece a little bit and some of it I liked and some of it I didn't like. So this is like the Matstead original. This is how I wrote it. Um, and this is available on my record, um, The Wend. Um, I'll see if I can find a copy um, uh, down down there to show you later. It's on one of my CDs um, called The Wend, and I wrote it um, a few years back. Um, and uh, the, if you do listen to the version on The Wend, it's slightly longer. The A section, I go back a few times, basically. But pretty much, otherwise, it's as we've got it, as we've got it here, which is cool. And the reason it's called um, Jacob's Ladder Oh, thanks, guys. Um, the reasons it's called Jacob's Ladder is it's inspired by a place that we love to go to in Devon here in England. And on the south coast, uh, there's a beautiful town called Sidmouth that lots of you will probably know from the folk festival they do there every year. And if you go right down the kind of the um, western side of the beach, there's some really beautiful red stone cliffs. And there's this white ladder that goes all the way up the cliffs to the top where there's a cafe and a little mini castle and a lookout and everything. And it really captured my imagination when I was a kid. And whenever I dream of Devon, I think of Jacob's Ladder. And the idea from the piece, I know it's a bit cheesy, but it's kind of it's kind of a, a bit of a, a musical version of that. So when we do our climb up, which I'll teach you in a minute, we're actually climbing the ladder. <laughs> that's the idea so I know cheesy as heck but I like it <laughs> so let's have a look at a few things then to explore um, as we get started um, let me just move this here I just put out my sheets so I could read them but I need my notes now so that I can tell you all the things I need to tell you about so um, first of all I wanted to look at ukulele position this is going to be really key with this one because you want to be um, really, really comfortable um, and keep, play your ukulele in as much of an ergonomic, comfortable sense as possible. So one of the key things, as I say, I normally play about a strap, but it's just because I wanted to get the fingering in for the video and I couldn't hold my ukulele in a comfortable angle otherwise. Um, but generally what I want you to do, I'm sitting right back so you can see now, I'd like you to rest your ukulele in your lap. And you'll notice that the lower bout of my ukulele is on the inside part of my leg. That's really important because if I didn't have the strap, and as I say, I normally don't, it would kind of wriggle away, wouldn't it, if it was up here? But just by having it on the inside part of my leg, it helps keep it um, in a nice and comfortable position. The other thing is, even with a strap, it still stops this lower end going off. The temptation of a strap is to have it like this, isn't it? But this is much better practice if we can. And notice that the uke is at a 45 degree angle. That's really important because it allows this hand to move all over the fretboard freely. If it's down here, it's kind of awkward. My thumb ends up, up here and so many awkward, so many um, chords become really, really difficult. So we want that 45 degree angle. And the only other thing is notice that my uke is slightly away from my tummy. You can see my big tummy today. <laughs> um, I'm not cuddling it tight. It's just away a little bit. It doesn't have to be out here, 
but just away maybe an inch or so just to allow the wood to breathe which is um, really really important now in terms of our right arm we're going to be playing in something called pima position today and um, pima is where we take the thumb the index the middle and the ring and we assign them to a string we're actually going to alter this position slightly today um, the reason it's called pima is that all these techniques go back to spanish classical guitar and in spanish the p is polga your thumb is polga indies medio and the ring finger in spanish is annular so p i m a so if i say an m or an a at, at any point that's what i mean but i'll kind of don't worry i'll literally physically show you how to do this but the important thing just right from the off in terms of this right arm is i want it to be coming over the top of your ukulele and for today we're going to use a very specific finger picking angle can you see how these fingers are at a 45 degree angle to the strings? They're not at 90 degrees like this or like this. They're at 45, a slight angle. And you'll find if you come over the upper bout of your ukulele, you'll get this quite naturally. And we call this short arm position. Full short arm would be a little bit more up here, but still short arm. Long arm position is where we come from down here and we have this up here. OK, so we're just coming in over the top here and you can just get comfortable. Try and have a nice arch on your hands as much as possible so your sleeve isn't going to interfere with the strings. And this is the position I want you to keep throughout the piece. OK, our left hand wants to be um, as, as kind of free as possible. So we want the thumb to be on the back of the ukulele as much as possible today. Try not to have it riding up the top too much, OK? Because when we're doing some of those chords like F minor later on, it makes it really difficult. Whereas if thumb's on the back, I can have a nice arch on my hands, OK? So thumb on the back as much as possible today. So we've got these fingers free up here. I'll move in close and I'll show you a couple of things. We're going to have a look at a scale in a minute before we get started. I'm just going to have a quick question here from Esther. So Esther's just asking, um, when the uke is plugged in, I find that the end of the lead going into the uke forces a slightly lower angle. That's interesting. It should. Do, 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 do. do you mean more shallow like this, Esther? It could be. There's um there's a couple of ways you can you can get around that, Esther. So if you have your pickup coming out of here, which most pickups will, this uke's got a pick um a pickup in it, and you have your straight lead coming out. The first is you might have to if I come back again, you might have to sit with it a little further towards the outside of your leg rather than on the inside, because otherwise that lead is necessarily gonna have to press on here. So it might have to be slightly out this way so the lead can come straight out. You should still be able to get it relatively at 45 degree angle. The other thing you can do, Esther, is invest in an L-shaped lead. So you can buy leads that instead of the jack going straight into your ukulele like that, they have, they have an angle on them, a, a right angle. That way you can plug them in. And when I do that... I'm trying to think if I haven't got one as an example, but I'll just show you. When I do that, what I do is I have the lead coming out and I wrap it around my strap up here and then out. So lead actually comes up and away and that should that should help. Yeah, cool. Okay, if you're uh, Esther, if you remind me, I'll show you next lesson actually, because I've actually got some leads here, so I can, I'll physically show you because that'll be a really good, really good thing to do. So Cool. Hi Judy, I hope you're doing well. Very snowy up there in Wales by the sounds of it. Okay, before we kick off, let me talk to you a little bit about the piece in terms of um, the tuning. So this piece of music is in the key of C and it's largely based around something called the C pentatonic scale with a little bit of chromaticism. I'll explain the chromaticism bit in just a while. So first of all, what I want you to do is grab your uke and we're just going to play through the C major pentatonic scale. Okay, I'm going to teach it to you one step at a time. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pick the first two notes from the C major pentatonic scale using your thumb on the C string. So it'll look something like this. So with your thumb you're going to pick an open C, 
Don't worry, this isn't written down anywhere, folks, but I can give you a link to one later. Second fret for a D. Okay, so those are your first two notes, that C major pentatonic scale. Low C, D. Then I want you to pick with your index finger up on the E string for an open E. We're going to put our finger here for a G. We're going to do an open A. And now this time I want you to try using your either your middle or your ring finger for this one. And then we have a high C. Let me put that together again. There's a reason I'm getting you to use the thumb, you'll see in a minute. So we have C, D, then E, open, G, and open A, and C. Oh, I promised a little warm-up exercise as well. If you just want to warm your hands up, this, this is the easiest thing. You, we could do all sorts of exercises on here. I won't, I won't worry about that today because we'll warm up as we go anyway. But there's the easy easiest thing to do a hand warm up is just to stretch your fingers out. Imagine you're kind of like a megalomaniac dictator, like whoa. -ha 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 -ha. <laughs> what I do is I, as I'm tensing my hands, you can actually physically, can you see the red of my hands? That's the blood coming into my fingers through doing this. It's amazing. And I tense them up and as I tense them, I bring those fingers in and then release the tension. So tense, release, tense, release. And again, it's really interesting. You can actually physically see the blood entering my hands. I can feel my hands warming up as I do this. I generally do this before I'm doing concerts. It really warms me up so I'm not going in cold. So have a little go at that, especially if you're in a cold house today. That will really help. Resist the temptation to do that cracking thing after that some people do, because that's not very good. In fact, it's really bad for um, arthritis and things like that. So just a tense and release. There you go. It should help warm you up a little bit. So one more time, back to that C major pentatonic. Here we go. Hi, Moro. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, oh, the most handsome and charming ukulele teacher on YouTube. My goodness, I think that's the best compliment I've ever had. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. You can come back, that's for sure. Okay, so we've got C and D, E and F on the E string. Uh, sorry, E and G, sorry, I'm being daft. And then A and C. Now this piece also involves an E flat, and the reason it used that is it kind of introduces a slight bluesy feel to things. And in the blues, we often use this note here, an E flat in the key of C. It's the third note for the scale, C, D, E, but we flatten it. So we have this, so now I'm gonna get you to play, just copy me. I'm going to get you to play. We're going to ignore the D. We're going to skip straight to the E flat. So now we're going to play open C, zero. Then we're going to play the third fret for E flat. We're going to pick up for an open uh, for an open E. We'll do a G here, an open A, and a high C. That gives us off three, off three, off three. Again. Lovely. Now the first part of this piece is all based around that progression, those notes. Let's have a look at it on the sheet music. Okay, so this first bit, we've got a picking pattern basically going on whilst we do a C major chord. So we're going to get into it. Don't worry, I'll talk more about technique and tone and things as we go. Just remember that 45 degree angle. And if you've got nails, bring your fingers back over the sound hole so they're not clattering into here. Okay. And what we're going to do for this very first part is we're just going to do, we're going to pick the C string with our thumb. We're going to pick the E string with either our middle or ring. Then we're going to pick the G string with the thumb as well. And then we're going to go to this high C note where we're just playing the A string. And I use my ring finger for that. So if I come in really close, notice that the thumb is picking the notes on both the C and the G string. It will look like this. Let me see. Here we go. 
See that? So thumb's taking C and G. And I'm using these two fingers for the other notes. Have a little practice of that. Often we call this pick and pattern inside outside because we have inside outside. Then what we do is we take this finger away. So we're playing, it's almost like a C6 chord. And we pick the outside two strings in this pattern. A string, G string, A string. Okay. Again, using that thumb to just tap up here. So, C position, we have. Take away. Not too bad, right? Now you notice at the piece at the start of the piece of music we have an MF. That just stands for mezzo forte. Now a lot of people think that means to play really loud because forte means loud, but mezzo forte, medium loud, is your normal picking volume. So you don't need to really grab at these strings, just keep them to your normal ukulele volume. Don't have to pick it too hard. So um yeah. Oh, no worries, Anne. And um, don't worry, even if you're just listening along and enjoying it, you'll get little tips as we go on finger style and all sorts. That's really important. I actually made myself a note to say that on my show notes at the start. Um, if, if anyone struggles with this piece, remember, you don't have to be able to play it today. This is just to teach you concepts and you've got the whole of the rest of your life to perfect this. All right. So just kind of absorb as much as you can as we go and then you can practice it as we go along. But that's your opening. The next bit, if, let's just make that bit a little bit bigger so we can come in just on that second measure. Now, this is where we change our, have to change our technique ever so slightly because the next few notes are a G, which is the third fret of the E string here. Then we tap that G string. See, two notes the same, right? Take our finger away. Now, this next note, this E flat, the third fret of the C string, because we're going from this string to this string using index and then thumb, you don't really want to have to move the thumb up and down. So this is the rare occasion where a note on the C string is going to be played without index finger. Now the timing is really easy on this one because we just hit every note on every other beat. So it sounds like this. One and, sorry, one and two and three and four. So I hit each note and each time I just ping that G string. Okay, give that a go. Two, three, four. Okay, let's put those first two measures together. You might think, gosh, we haven't got very far. We've uh, all this time we've only done two measures, but don't worry because this bit is repeated quite a lot. So you'll soon get the hang. Um, let, just trying to get the best angle here so you can still see my thumb as well. Okay, so timing on the first bit, we've got one long note in the middle. I sometimes like to count it as one and two and three and four and. So there's a note there that we just let hang. Another way to think about it is quick, 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 long, quick, quick, quick. Okay. If I piece those measures together, mistake then so I'm going to do that again okay that second measure not too bad just the notes are just and then in between just tapping that G string okay lovely now what we really want to work on here as well is our tone Whoops, went to the wrong camera then. So um, another thing you can do is as you're picking up, try and angle your finger so that you're not using the very middle part of your finger like this, which will sound quite timmy, or the side of your nail, which will sound really quiet. That 45 degree angle. 
and just pull your fingers up as if they're cycling into your hands as you go and that will produce that lovely warm tone that we're after for this one one more thing and then we'll do the next measure which is exactly the same you'll be glad to hear notice we've got a decrescendo mark can you see that arrow that's kind of getting smaller and smaller as it goes across that just means we're going to quieten as we play that second measure so if i put that together i have medium loud and then just quieten off as you go and you get that lovely dynamic next two measures exactly the same see how we're quieting down there and it's up to you how much that you want to kind of exaggerate that you can go you can go a bit crazy with it and have it super quiet on that second measure or you can make it a little bit more consistent is is absolutely fine okay let's have a look at this one just got a question from esther bar two and four the last thumb pick on the g isn't notated is this a composer's variation uh let me have a look do 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 Yeah, I think I probably do that out of habit, Esther. So on the sheet, there's no thumb pick after the last note. So you just stop on that note. I tend to add another little pick after that, just because I do when I play live. So yeah, that's just a habit of playing things live. I add that last one. But it really doesn't matter. It doesn't affect things. It just means that we've added an extra quaver in there basically turned it into two quavers and a crotchet but you can either play it as it's written or just have a little tap on that as well the important thing is just to keep that very straight rhythm on that one all right so next bit we're going to descend the ladder so we're climbing down jacob's ladder okay so what we do and i like to use my th uh, middle two fingers for this bit because i find it more comfortable than trying to squish two in like this so I use my second and third fingers and I put them on the middle two strings at the fifth fret. And then I do my outside inside picking pattern that we did in the first measure. Now this is a slight variation from the grades version. So in the grades, let me just make that smaller so you can see what I'm doing. Sorry guys, I'm having to scooch about a lot. It's lucky I've got wheels today on this chair. Um, on the grades version, we keep that picking pattern going for the whole measure twice like that but i realize when i play it live i like the slightly more mystical sound of keeping the pattern that we do in the first measure so we have our inside outside thumb index thumb middle or thumb index thumb index and then we reverse it again we do a string g string a string okay let me do that slowly Now I much prefer this version. I think it sounds more mystical. It kind of sounds like you go on a journey and go back again. Inside, outside, A, G, A. Then you just pull your fingers back down to the third fret and do exactly the same thing. Not too bad, right? Then we go to a C chord and you're gonna do your inside out pattern. And you're just going to travel up the fretboard. We're going to do two C's like this. And then we're going to take it up to the seventh fret. And can you see those little squiggles above the music there? It looks like a little wobbly wave um, on measures. Where are we? Where's my version? Um, on measures seven and nine uh, seven and eight sorry we've got those little squiggles now that just means a little bit of vibrato here's the tip about vibrato so that you can use this even if you're not, not playing this piece so and if you're still watching here's a little tip that you can use for any song okay so my favorite tip for vibrato is first of all try and use a finger other than your index finger to play the note so don't use that one the reason is um, you've got more weight in this part of the hand where your thumb is and if you use your index finger to play a note it's it's kind of hard to vibrato you can't get the balance so I try and use my third or fourth when I'm doing vibrato so I'm going to put my third finger on the C note 
The ne next thing is get your thumb off the back of the uke, okay? So you can press this um, note in here, but try and keep your thumb off the back. That means when we shake that vibrato, I can shake my whole arm. Can you see how my whole arm moves? Whereas if my thumb is on the back, it kind of it kind of stops me moving so much. Whereas here I can really wriggle about, which is lovely. Next up, we move the arm from the elbow. So when we vibrato, it's not the finger that's moving, it's not the wrist that's moving, really it's the whole arm from the elbow. Can you see it's very, if I did it in slow motion, it would look something like that. It's kind of hard to do in slow motion. But it's a little wobble from the elbow. Imagine that this finger has grown roots into the fretboard. Imagine it's glued in place on that fret, so it can't move from side to side. We don't actually want that. We want it to stay where it is, and it's the hand and arm that wobbles, okay? That's the next thing. And then you can experiment with how much you want to put in, whether you want to do a fast vibrato like this or a slower, wider vibrato like that. It just depends on your taste. And as you play that C note, it massages the note, makes it last a bit longer, and puts a slight wobble in it is really nice. So I do that as I go up. Okay. So let me just um, have a check. Do, 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 do. Okay. So for this one, um, the finger, the finger wants to just stay exactly where it is. In terms of the vibrato in Johnny, if you mean that, you want to keep that finger exactly where it is. It doesn't want to move up or down. Keep it just a little wobble from left to right on the strings. In terms of the notes, I'm going to talk about that next. I like to introduce something called a little bit of legato on this next bit. Legato is where we make notes kind of smooth into each other. So instead of using one finger here, and then going up to that high E note, that seven, use my little finger. I'm actually going to keep my finger down, the third finger, the whole time. And it's very subtle, but you, did you hear? You get a slight, a slight slidey sound as we go. It's very subtle, but I do that as I'm playing through my picking pattern. Just to add that little bit of legato. Right, let's be brave. Let's try the first two lines. I'm going to do these in slow motion and I'm doing this purposefully slow motion. And this is another lesson as well. When you're trying to work out a piece of music, the worst thing you can do is start at a high tempo because the worst thing you can do is this. where you're kind of pausing to think about the notes and it destroys the flow and it destroys the rhythm. Best things start at a slow, 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 slow tempo and then gradually increase it. Okay. If anyone's into their BPMs, this one's Allegro it's written in, which generally means somewhere between 120 and 150 beats per minute. I play this around 130 normally, just, to, just in case anyone's into that. I don't think you should sweat that for now. I think you should start slow, but just because I do get asked, asked that. Okay, so really slow motion. We're not going to go any faster than this. If I just give you a, a, a tempo. Okay, we're going to keep it that tempo. Notice that when I play that C note, I have to use my index finger on measure two. So I do inside, outside. Okay. As I come through these, this note here I do pick with my index finger because then I can pick the next one later. So really slowly, one and two and three and four and Oh, I went wrong. I'm going to slow that down even further. If I'm going wrong, you, you might be going wrong. One and two and three and four and... Backwards. G, E, that funny E flat. And up. There we go again. I 
middle two fingers on the strings, middle two strings, same on three, C position, and then we take it up, and then we repeat. how you got on with that guys I'm going to just pause here for a second so you can just um, have a bit of a breather and let me know how you got on so I repeat that um, twice generally when I play this song so I play the first two lines twice but you can play it as many times as, as you want um, and, and that's the same with all of this piece it's quite free form really and when I used to play it live with um, I used to play this with uh, my bassist friend called Rob hopefully we will do it again at some point in the future and um, we used to have to really keep eye contact because I could never remember how many times to play each section. So I just look at Rob when I was going to the next station, to, to the next section, I give him a little wink or I'd, a movement on stage so he'd, he'd know what was going on. But yeah, you can play that. You can play that as much as much as you like. Let's have a look at the next bit then. So this is where we're really going to start climbing the ladder. To be honest, this is one of the um, most simple parts of the song, which is quite nice because we've got a picking pattern the whole time. And then we're just going to take our fingers up the fretboard. And I'm going to show you some kind of fingerings for this to make it really clear as well. Notice the little MP symbol mezzo piano now. Piano we think of as a musical instrument, don't we? But in Italian, that's quiet. So we've got Spanish here in terms of the fingering, pima, and we've got Italian in terms of the musical um, symbols. So MP, mezzo piano, nice and quiet, okay? Now when we're just playing quietly, the temptation is sometimes to slow down, but we wanna keep the tempo really consistent. But it just means as you're picking, just lighten up with the strings. Now, if you've got nails, and if we've got time at the end, I'll talk a little bit about nails and nail shaping. Um, you don't have to have long nails like mine to play finger style. Um, I just like the way they sound on my ukulele. That's why I have these these um, fingernails. But you can you can play it with short nails as well. If you have got longer nails on your right hand, when I go to mezzo piano, I like to just use a little bit more of the flesh. So I purposefully roll my finger a little bit more over the thing, uh, over the string, rather than just using the nail. And I find that just gives it a nice, um, a nice kind of uh, softer tone. So yeah. Oh, I had a question or a, or a comment coming in from Chris. Now, Chris is, has said, um, using my index finger on the C string is, is a little bit tricky. It can feel a bit weird, Chris, that one, when you go to that E flat note. The trouble is, if you don't use that index finger, you have to do two, two thumb picks, and you can do that, but it's kind of a bit harder to do it to do it quicker, quickly. Whereas that one can be a bit more quick. Now, you don't necessarily have to use the thumb on the G string and the C string in general as well. You can go full pima, which is where the thumb takes the G string, index takes the um, C, middle takes the E and the ring takes the A. And then you just pull up one string at a time like this. You could do it that style. The reason I like the thumb to do it that way is it just creates this circular movement, which I think kind of softens it and just helps with the flow. But either's fine, honestly, as long as you're getting that nice rhythm and it's sounding nice, just go for it. I've got a motto on the ukulele, you've probably heard me say it before, if it sounds good and it feels good, it is good. All right. So people get really het up in technique and things. But honestly, if you follow that motto, you'll be right as rain. If it sounds good and it feels good, it is good. All right. So let's have a look at this, this next line then. So this is measures nine going onwards. So basically, we're going to do our coming up the ladder now. So I'm coming close. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the picking pattern that we had from the start again, where we're doing inside outside. 
And this time, that inside outside, if I can enclose, you could even just use two fingers for that there. That pattern continues for the whole of the next two measures. So we do inside outside with no fingers down. Then we put our fingers on this. It's like an A chord that's been moved down. That would be A, wouldn't it? We're playing it here. We're actually playing two notes a third apart, a D and an F. If you don't know what that means, don't sweat it. It's not important for now. But these are called thirds, a D to an F, because there's three notes. There's a note in between D, E, F, and we call that dissonance, a third. Next thing we do is we take that up one fret and we do the same thing. And we take it up one more fret and we do it again. Now this is introducing something called chromaticism. If I do that middle one, because we're in the key of C, when I do these two notes, which is an E flat and an F sharp, or you can think about it as a G flat, it Whoa. sounds really discordant, right? But chromaticism introduces a little bit of, it's like salt and pepper or spice in a piece of music. Our ears love to be tickled. So anytime we play notes that don't belong in a scale, it's called chromaticism. And chromaticism often goes up in half steps. So we're doing the same shape, in effect, half a step higher, like this as we climb up. Now this next bit where we go to the two notes on the middle two strings, if you use these two here, what we want to do is we want to we want to use. I'm sorry, I got distracted. Then it's my bad. Um, when we do this next bit and we go up, when you go to the fifth fret, switch to these two fingers because you get the smoother change. Okay, so do that again. Notice we're back to the outside two strings for that one. Let's give that a nice go after seven. One and two and three and four and two and one. Take it up, take it up. And then second and third fingers, bring it back to three. Excellent. And then we finish off that by going to a C chord take it up to seven just like we did in that first section okay i just put pa pause there for a second just see how you got along so yeah bum, bum, bum. yeah you've noticed esther yeah well done you, you're really good at picking up on these things yeah again that's softening it so i go slightly to the side of my thumb for the g string when i do this mp section it just kind of softens everything so it's not all nail um, if you use your nails, you get that nice loud tone. But if you soft, if you go, so Esther's noticed that when I was doing the first section, my thumb was more in this direction. Can you see what I mean? So the nails hit that G string. But when I've gone to this MP section, it's gone a bit more sideways on. Look, do you see how that softens it? because it's the side of the, the thumb hitting. All these little things, they make such a massive difference. It's really interesting, isn't it? So, um, yeah, cool. Okay, then let's have a look. So let's try put piecing that all together. What we'll do is we'll try the whole of the bottom, the, um, we'll try the bottom two lines of the first sheet, if that makes sense. So we're gonna do this going up, up the um, fretboard bit to the middle two. In fact, actually, this will take us right up to measure 20, guys, if you're following on the sheet music. So this is, this is going to go into the next page as well. I come in on super close cam. That should do it. Here we go. One and two and three and four and Middle two fingers. Bring it back. C, and get louder here if you can, back to quiet, up the ladder we go, <laughs> five and five, 
ngerenge ta now this time we're going to do something different actually this time we're going to stay up there so let's have a look at this where we specifically are because i almost got a little bit lost myself there let's have a look at the last two measures of the first page so we're going to still do our, our kind of climbing up the ladder and we're going to finish it with these two fingers now this time when we go up to this bit we're actually going to reach out with our little finger to this seventh fret up here keep the pattern going It's hinting at an F chord. It's like we're playing an F sus4 here. Don't worry too much about that. S sus2 actually. And then after we've done four of those, just take your finger off to the seventh fret and then take it way up to 10. You can do a little bit of vibrato. So from measures um, 15 and 16, it will sound like this. Let me go a nice slow tempo. One and two and Three and four and five. Add the seven. Take it, these two off. Take it up to ten. Yeah, well done, everyone. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, don't worry, Adrani. It's quite hard to do. Um, quite hard to do about the sheet music, isn't it? Just follow some of the techniques as much as you can, and hopefully you'll get something out of it in terms of that anyway, which it, which would be brilliant. So that's a, that's a lovely. That's my favourite bit because that's a, that's us going up the ladder. Now, if you want to be super fancy pants about this, I'm going to show you one more little technique, okay? Which is really sweet, and this is what I do when I play it live totally optional this so don't sweat it right but let me show you when we do this first bit and we do these open notes to this d and f here this kind of a shape what i'll sometimes do is before i put this shape down i'll pick the c string before i put my shape down can you set so and what that creates is a hammer on have a listen Get, I just pick. I start picking without my fingers down and I slam them down. In effect, creating a, a, a pretty little hammer on. And then I take it up, and this next one, if it, again, this is totally optional, but sometimes I pick and then slide my fingers up. Again, you don't have to do that. It's plenty pretty without it. But this is what it would be like normally. Okay. And I'll add the little hammer on. It's quite subtle. It just creates a little kind of legato effect, which is quite pretty. So one last time, let's do measures 13. Nope, sorry, measures nine, measures nine through to measure 20. So the whole of that next section. You notice at the end of measure 20, um, if I just turn the page, there's a double bar line. Um, can you see just at the end of this line here, there's a double bar line. It's thicker than the other ones. That tells you you're coming up to a new section. So quite often composers um, will put that into music just to break up the sections. So if we go from measure nine to that, you can think of that as the second section. Let's give it a go. Here we go. One and two and three and four and two and one, three and two. Four and three, five and five, backwards, three, backwards, C, up to seven. Then we go again up the ladder. Two and one, three and two, four and three, five and five. Oh, sorry, this time add your little finger to seven. Almost forgot then, guys, sorry. Just take away your middle two fingers and take it up to ten. Okay, fantastic.
fantastic. Now, for this next section, what I want you to do, I'm going to stay on close cam. I'm sorry about you having to stare at my double chin rather than my face. Um, what I want you to do is leave this finger here on this 10th fret as we've come out. So when we've just done this bit, whoops. this one on this 10th fret. Now this next section which looks really complex when you look at the tab, honestly it's really easy. Let me show you, I, I promise I'm not just saying that, it's just playing one shape and moving it down the fretboard. So when we come to measure 21 all we need to do is reach over with that index finger to, to, to the 7th fret up here. See it up here? And we just do our inside out pattern again. And the reason I chose to do that is I love the fact you get these two really low notes. Followed by two really high notes. Because we're on the highest two strings and we're up the fretboard. It creates that lovely juxtaposition, right? You do that four times, then you just pull those fingers back to seven and five, do exactly the same thing. Guess what? We pull that shape back again to three and four, we come down the ladder, aren't we? You've guessed. Now this time we only do two of these. Then I go to three and two. Now you could use your third finger here. I actually just tend to keep those same two fingers on, on and I just kind of squish them together a little bit like that. So let's go for measure 21 again. Okay, so we're gonna do 10 and seven. One and two and three and four and. Take it back to your next dots. Take it back to your next dots, then three and two. Now all we need to do is take this index finger back one, and that takes it to this lovely G sharp note here. See how that creates a lovely bit of dissonance. Now this next one, you could move this little finger back to two for this B note here. I start to find it a bit uncomfortable here because I find that my hand kind of clashes against the headstock. So instead of doing that, I, I do change fingers here to one and two, uh, one and three like this. Okay, let's go, let's go from 10 and seven and put all that together. So back to measure 21, one and two and three and four. Back to your next dots. Back to three and five. Two and three. Index finger goes back to one. Then the next finger goes back to two. And then we finish with one of the most melancholy chords in the world, a C major seven. Just take everything off but that finger on the second fret and keep that picking pattern going. Next measure is just an F chord. And then we add this little finger down here. The bottom line, second page, we go again, C major seven. again. Okay. Then we're going to go on to the very last page and all we're doing is adding our little finger for that high C on the F chord and definitely use your little finger. Don't be tempted to use your third finger there, use that little finger because this next chord is based on an F minor. You leave that little finger where he is and just flip these two around so they're on the first fret at the um, first fret here and the first fret of the E string. That little finger stays where it is. Let me show you that again. So from the F chord, look, um, I add my little finger and then I flip those two around. It can take a little bit of practice. 
And then we've got to go, this is a big stretch up to the fifth fret. And then we finish with uh, putting your little finger on the seventh fret. And it's, a, it's actually still a C chord, it just has a high E note at the top. Okay, I'll explain what all those funny symbols mean in a minute, all right? But if I just play that final line, okay, we've got this F with the C added, flip to the F minor, reach up to the fifth if you can, tough one on a tenor, and then take everything off just up to the seventh. Well done, guys. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about that last line in a minute, and it, hopefully I'll be a bit learning in there, even if you haven't got the sheet in front of you, just about some musical symbols, which would be quite cool. Let me go to that last line. I'll bring it up on screen for those that haven't got the sheet music. So we've got a few kind of musical symbols going on here. There we go. So if I can make that bigger, I think. Whoa, that's very big. A bit smaller. There we go. Sorry, guys. Okay, there we go. So we've got some new, new musical symbols here. We've got writ. That can stand for a few things. Um, written dando is, is the main one. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it can also be called retardo, but that's kind of slower. So written dando is the normal one. That means we're slowing down as this chord, as this section progresses. So when you hit that F minor, and this is quite a welcome relief because that's quite a tricky chord. So it means that we can kind of relax out a bit when we hit this um, F minor, sorry. So we're going to start at the normal pace. But as we go, we slow down, there's the reach. Now with that reach, you've only got to get the very tip of that little finger to hit that high note there. Okay. There is another way you can do this and I wanted to show you this as, as an option. What you can do is you can play this shape. Let me just get it. So you know how you can play an E minor here? If you were to take, oh sorry, an E minor like that. I'm having a daft moment. Sorry guys. Um, if you were to take that up one more fret, that would be an F minor. So you can do that shape and add this little finger in here. That gives you another version, another place you can play that um, F minor chord if you don't want to do that big stretch. I like the stretch because I like the kind of dis the um, the different timbre. Um, if you want to make it sound really clean, what you need to do is you need to play the F minor shape with a, a finger covering the G string as well. So you end up rearranging, it'll look something like this. If I bring this, hang on, where can I get it in close cam? There you go. So it will be like a D minor shape on five and four. And your little finger is also going to hit this fifth fret to get that D note. Okay, like that, and then you can go up. So you could do this last bit like this. Now the symbols on that last bit, that very last measure, you've got a couple of, in fact, you've got three different symbols. There's a lot going on there for one chord, isn't there? A bit mad, really. Now, the the first, in fact, you've got four symbols. Oh my goodness. The first um, one that looks like a wiggly line in an arrow, that's telling you that we're, um, we're strumming. So rather than picking, because you could pick that like this, But we want, oh sorry, I meant not a seven. Come on, brain in. So that would give a kind of a more shrill thing, but the fact that the arrow there means that we want to slightly arpeggiate the chord. So you could use four fingers like this and roll the chord. But I find it easier just to strum down. So the arrow is just a strum. 
The next thing is we've got an accent marker. That just means we're giving it a little bit more volume than everything we've just played. It's a way of kind of cancelling out that decrescendo because we're getting quieter. But then we want a bit more volume here. So that little kind of what looks like a little tiny arrow going across, that is an accent. So it means you've just hit it a bit harder. The decrescendo is the long arrow before it, which is telling you you're getting quieter, which when combined with the writ means you're getting quieter and slower. OK, and then we've got that accent. We've got two more things, haven't we? All on one chord. The first one is um, a, a vibrato. Now, we already know how to do that because we've been practicing it. That's your wiggly line. looks like a wave. Finally. We've got a symbol. It kind of looks like um, a bird's eye or a lizard's eye, a dot and then like a rainbow over the top. That's called a fermata. That means a note of indistinguishable length. Now, all that means is when you strum that chord, you don't stop it at the end of the measure because normally it would be one, two, three, four. Technically, that's what would happen musically there because we're meant to stop chords at the end of a measure. Two, three, four. But a fermata just means, if you've ever seen it in a piece of music, now you know, it just means you play the chord and you let your ukulele tell you when to finish it. Whenever it starts, it stops ringing. Sometimes if it's ringing on and on and on, then eventually, you, you see Jake Shimabukuro does a lot of this, doesn't he, Ray? And then eventually, when he feels it's time, stops those strings. So that's what that means. So accent means hit it a little bit louder. Squiggle means you're going to strum it. Vibrato means you're going to wiggle it. And fermata means don't stop it. All right. So we're strumming, we're hitting hard, we're wiggling, and we're not stopping. All on one chord. <laughs> That's why sometimes these musical um, symbols, they're really important because if you didn't know that, it might just sound like that, which would be rubbish, right? So there we go. OK, right. Let me know if there's any questions or anything. And then what I think I'd like to do is have a playthrough super slow. We'll go really slow tempo so that everyone can have a go and have a, a bit of a join in. Then we'll try one more at tempo. Not, I'm not expecting you all to be able to play it at tempo, but it'll be nice if there's a version towards the end that those that are watching back on a replay, they can rewind and have a go at and hear how it sounds. I know I did one at the start, but it's nice to have one at the end as well, isn't it? So let's see if we can put all of it together. I think what I do is I'll actually shrink this down because you probably can't follow it on screen and I can't turn it whilst I'm playing. So if I get rid of that, I come into close cam, you can kind of watch what I'm doing then. I'll come in about here, okay? So just follow it through with me and we're gonna go super slow tempo right from the start. Then I'm gonna take questions because there's quite possibly there's gonna be a lot of questions on this and that's absolutely fine. And you can let me know how you got on and if you enjoyed it. Let's have a go. Here we go, really slow. So your tempo is gonna be about here. So, oh, I just got one question. Um, the vibrato slows. Um, I'll come back to that, Indrani, in just a sec. Esther, if I forget that, can you remind me? I'll come back at the end of these playthroughs. OK, so here we go. Um, Indrani, don't worry about the vibrato for this playthrough, just so it doesn't slow you down or anything. OK, let's go nice and slow. One and two and three and four and... to five and backwards down to three I'm slowing down on purpose a bit and then C chord up to seven then we go again back to the start up 
five, three, C chord, up to seven, now softly up the ladder, off, two and one, three and two, four and three, five and five, and back, three and three, and back, C chord, up to seven. The ladder again, guys. Off two and one, three and two, four and three, five and five. Add the seven now. Fingers off, except your little finger. Take it up to ten. Add this finger to seven. it back to your next dots. Bring it back to your next dots. Three and two. First finger back to one. Finger on the bottom string to two. Off for the C major seven. if you can. And then hit that seven. And then do a little dance because you made it. Yeah! <laughs> well done, guys. There you go. Let us know you got on with that. Send us a heart um, or a like or any questions if you got stuck. So I'm I'm not disappearing. I'm still going to be here for a bit. So any questions with any of that, let me know. Um, I just deal with Indrani's question and then we'll have a fast playthrough. And if you're not quite there able to play it fast, just kind of have a listen and enjoy it so you've got something to, to aim towards. Okay, guys. So Indrani was just saying when she does a vibrato and um, it slows her down a bit now you might find it's because you're pushing a little bit too hard into the fretboards and Johnny if you find when you're doing it's probably that three to seven isn't it it might be that if you push a little bit too hard then it's kind of hard to move from there and it kind of creates a drag so as you're doing that vibrato Make sure this finger is pushing very lightly on the string, hardly touching it all. And then you won't find it so bad, okay? And again, don't don't feel you have to do a massive vibrato. It could just be a little shake, like that. And then keep it light as you go up. And you should find that will just help kind of smooth it out a bit. And we've got a, yeah! from Indrani so excellent <laughs> that's great to hear let's try it once um at pace then at tempo so um again don't don't worry if you haven't got this yet but let's just have a little try because it's good to good to what is it they say even if you line in gutter and same for the stars I do a lot of line in gutters I don't really I'm only teasing okay so oh Peggy that's great to hear so those little things that 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 means a lot thank you I really really appreciate it oh get some lovely messages well done guys that's brilliant oh nice nice there we go go oh yeah <laughs> thanks Laura thank you thank you you'll get it Charlene practice makes perfect I know it's a cheesy statement but it's so true isn't it really just take it take it slowly uh, Indrani, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all of these techniques, they're quite fiddly, so they take a fair bit of practice to, to perfect. Right, let's have a go, and then um, well, I'll stick around in any questions at all. I'm glad, I'm glad to have. Even if it's not related to this piece of music, let me know if there's anything you're struggling with or I can help with. 
and I'll do my best to help you. Okay. Okay. Oh, thanks, Angela. Thanks, Karen. Okay, here we go. I'll come in close, Cam. Remember, do as I say, not as I do. Try and keep that uke there at 45 degree angle, just so that I can reach the sheet music and everything. I'm going to be a bit lazy and I'm tipping my uke back and I'm going a bit horizontal. I don't want you to do this. I want you to do that. All right. <laughs> but just so you can see what I'm doing. Here we go then. Let's, let's give it a go then from top. Now this time, I'm going to do about here. So one and two and three and four and it's a bit unforgiving, but if you fancy a go, just join in. One and two and three and four and. Oh, sorry, I'm going to do that again, just slightly quicker. One and two and three and four and. One more time. <laughs> sorry, my time is out. One, one and two and three and four and. Hope you enjoyed that guys it's a it's um it's not too bad once you get into the rhythm of it and getting those picking patterns i reckon you'll be able to do this with a bit of practice guys so there we go and um i hope that just gives you an idea i wouldn't really take it up much faster than that i think on the original i do play it a little bit faster again but hopefully that will um that will kind of give you give you some ideas so yeah that's it so Brilliant. Let's have a look. So, do, 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 do. just checking through your comments and everything. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, I think with this one, um, oh, well done, Karen. Oh, thanks, Angela. That's lovely to hear. I sometimes forget that as well, uh, as well, Amanda. And I think in the original on, on the record as well, it goes back after you do the B section. I think it goes back and does the A section all over again. So, um, yeah, that, that's cool. That's cool. Remember, it's all, all good practice. And just think, even if you can't play that, hopefully just those little tips about vibrato and legato, things like that. They'll help you in all your playing. So that's that's really important. So, um um rebecca that's a great question so the reason um i don't just leave my fingers on for pima i just find when i get into the rhythm of um the the little bit where we're going up the ladder you know as we as we go up i find when i'm doing that if i do a roll using my thumb so i come in close so i find it kind of a bit more intuitive than doing it that way it's just something uh, some hawaiian players like kimo hussey only ever uses two fingers 
so it gives you that kind of inside outside thing which can be quite intuitive the other fit reason a lot of us do that is that by having the thumb on the G string and the C string you get almost like this alternating bass where the timbre of your thumb on those strings is the same and then because you're picking up with fingers on the other two strings those those notes are a little bit more shrill whereas this is softer so it kind of affects the timbre whereas when you do it this way there you've got an up pick with your nail so it's really, I mean, that's proper pedantry, Rebecca. So absolutely, if, if it sounds good Pima style and it's comfortable, that is absolutely totally cool. All right. I don't know why I shook my head and I meant to do that. <laughs> it is totally cool. <laughs> so don't feel, don't feel wedded to the thumb thing, but that's just to really get into the nitty gritty of it. So you can see why um, some of us, some of us use that. So yeah. Oh, no worries, Amanda. That's it. Um, another thing guys if you're ever watching these back and you want to um, have a practice along I don't some of you might not realize but it's a really amazing function um, if you go to the three dots that some of you will have on your YouTube screen you can actually alter the playback speed of the video it means when I'm talking I'll sound a bit like this but you can actually do the playbacks and it will keep the pitch the same. It's really clever. So it won't drop in pitch, but the, um, the the speed will be a bit less. And I use it all the time. If I'm trying to work out jazz music and I can't quite hear the notes properly, they're just a bit of a flurry of notes. I'll use that playback function. I'll take it to 0.75 or 0.5 and it makes it a little bit easier to play along. So that's something that you can um, have a go at as well. So. Oh, thanks for lovely comments as well, guys. So that's really amazing. Terry, um, if you've heard any of my videos, you've probably heard me say this a lot. So it's a bit it's a bit of a cliche with me. But if you can play it slowly, you can play it quickly. It's just practice, right? So get it dead slow first, really consistent, and then just gradually um, increase the speed from there, which would be excellent. So yeah. Thanks, Esther. That's interesting. I, I much prefer this to the exam version. There's a trouble when you've got stuff that you've got um, that you're doing for, for grades that you have to be quite specific about certain things. And I found that for a few of my pieces that I've written for um, grade books and similar that you end up having to change them and they don't sound quite as expressive. So this version, um, hopefully, hopefully you'll enjoy. Yeah. So that's that's good to hear. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, ba, 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 ba. what was I going to say? De, 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 de. Um, yeah. Um, Indrani, this is my, this is my high fuke. This is, this was like my first, yeah, it was. This was my first custom uke where I actually got the builder to build using specific woods and everything. So this was made by um, a guy called Jake McClay in California. And he's known as Hive Ukuleles. And I just love the curves. They're really curvy ukes. Um, real kind of clean, crisp design. So it's um, bird's eye maple back and sides, this one. Bird's eye maple. And then um, ebony. Uh, I, I wanted the all the trim and everything to match. So I've got ebony for that one. And then ebony headstock. And then a flame maple um, neck which kind of shimmers in the light which is really lovely so i love his his builds are so clean if you look inside even like the um bracing and everything it's like beautifully done it's really it's it's amazing i love i love jake's work it's absolutely brilliant so yeah this this one um so yeah and this one by the way guys because i just wanted to um i've got to get in promo mode again just whilst i remember i wanted to show you something cool so this piece that I did for the grades and I rewrote is going to be available in a new book that I'm producing. It's not finished yet, but I'm hoping by the time of the retreat, around the time of the retreat in the summer, it will be available. And it's going to be a piece, a, a book of original pieces. But you know how when you're doing ukulele, um, when you're doing ukulele um, pieces, quite often they're like eight measures long or like a page long. And sometimes I feel like I want longer pieces to really develop my skills and dig into and stuff. And that's what I've tried to provide here. So some of the pieces in the book are going to be like five pages long and it gives you loads to explore. 
and to perform as well. So these are some of the pieces. There's Jacob's Ladder, look. So these are the ones that I've just completed recently. Um, there's Cy Waltz, which um, was uh, from another book that I did a little while ago. Um, and then there's things like Pendulum, Lonely Waltz. Some of you have played that from my video. Um, a bit more of a kind of uh, a slightly different version. Pendulum, which is where we've got this nice kind of kind of uh, alternating G string. There's so much in here. Um, and it's all tabbed out as well. This nice one from Pale Pale Moon, which is really sweet. Um, this pendulum again. And all of these are going to be available in both low G and high G in the same book. So in the front of the book, there's a nice easy one as well. They're not all kind of crazy hard. Um, so some, so in the same book, if you want to experiment with tunings, they're both going to be available in low G and high G. And I have altered the arrangements for low G specifically. So it's kind of thought out. It's not just an afterthought. There's one that's um, kind of wrote, um, influenced by my granddad who grew up in Somerset. So that's called Cider with Rosie, that one. It's a kind of upbeat, um, kind of claw hammer one, that one. And then the Wend, which is like the epic five pager at the end to really challenge you. So it's going to be um, loads of stuff in there. So it's going to all be original pieces working on that at the moment. So keep an eye out for that, guys. Oh, a uh, question from Esther. So, do, 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 do. When you play the crescendo um, from the mezzo piano, for example, 13 or 14, do you change the angle of your finger and thumb again to play with less flesh? Yes, yeah. So whenever I'm going from mezzo piano to uh, mezzo forte or just kind of getting a bit louder, I tend to, I tend to come from a slightly more side on perspective. So see how my hand is really kind of a bit more side on rather than up like that. And then I'll kind of bring it out slightly more so it's slightly more lifted, which will really allow me to dig in then. So soft, slightly more sideways, and then loud. There you go. Oh, thanks, Peggy. Thank you. That's one, it's one of my favourite pieces to play, Pendulum. I'll see if I can remember any. There's a bit of pendulum for you from the book. That's a fun one, that is. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. Um, well, actually, hold that for. Um, it, it probably won't come to anything, but um, a couple of the books that I'm doing at the moment are with um, publishers to consider. So just keep everything crossed for me. I'm hoping to get them with a publisher so they'll do all the distribution for me rather than me literally having to stick things in envelopes and deal with all the shipping and that so um yeah hold that thought um the one thing would be a massive help just with all my stuff rebecca is just spreading the word really so if, if you do talk to anyone you know any festival organizers or book publishers or even just friends um just mention my name i'd really appreciate that that would that would be really, really helpful. But yeah, talking to a couple of publishers at the moment. So hopefully something will come of that. You just never know, do you? It's like trying to get a record deal again. I feel like I'm 15 again when I'm trying to get a record deal and you send all your demos out. Oh, talking of that, I'll see if I can find a CD to show you. So I think I've got some here. Yeah. This is, uh, this is the record I did. So um, it's called The Wend and um, recorded it with my friend um, Rob Ash, um, who's, a, who's a brilliant bass guitarist. He was in my first ever band, Rob Ash, um, and uh, we're still best mates and uh, see each other all the time, lives down in Bristol. And uh, it's an album. It's only got seven tracks on, but I wanted to keep it really short and sweet. I kind of, I'm a real strong believer in leaving people wanting more. Um, although sometimes people tell me I leave people wanting, wanting less, who knows. Um, but yeah, this is available on um, the Ukraine website and um, from my shop on mattsteadukulele.com as well. So if you enjoyed it, you can you can have a listen to our version with 
with um, bass guitar on and stuff. There it is, Jacob's Ladder. And it's got some lovely, um, it's got The Wend, which is one of my favourite compositions I did. That's going to be in the new book as well. Um, and I think Brambles might be in the new book as well. So there's a few bits and bits and pieces there as well. So, yeah. It's even got a funky ukulele jam on with funky bass on it, which is which is quite cool. So, yeah, this was this was recorded a, a few years ago, and I think this one I'm going to open one. So someone someone will have to get one without a packet, or I'll just keep this. Um, I think it was this one. Yeah, we did a cool record sleeve. So it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a mini vinyl. So it's on the CD, but it looks like um, it looks like a vinyl record. It's quite sweet, isn't it? So I'm quite into my modern art. So this was um, this was my um, my designs and, and the um, fractal record sleeve as well. I love that stuff. So, yeah. So, yeah, you can get your copy if anyone's interested. You can have a have a listen to that. There's also if you go on my YouTube channel, there's a, a couple of versions of me playing it live as well. where I did a mini desktop concert as well. You can look up. So, yeah. Cool. Oh, thanks, Karen. Thank you, guys. You guys are amazing. I love these live lessons. I was I was saying to um Sharon, my wife, it's her birthday today actually, and I was saying to her um how buzzing I was after Canicapila on Monday, which is the, my Monday session that I do. I so love our little community, and I really thank you all for being part of it. I really really appreciate it. It means, um, it really does mean the world to me. So thanks for all your support. I really really appreciate it. Um, and I look forward to it. I love these lessons. The only thing is, I, I genuinely mean this. I wish I could be in a room with you all. Sometimes I just want to have a cup of coffee or a beer afterwards and chat to you. And I feel like I'm chatting away. I want to hear you guys, not just comment. So maybe I'll see some of you in this summer at the retreat. But uh, yeah, <laughs> well, who knows? One day we'll all get in a room together, won't we? Which would be, which would be fantastic. So that'd be cool. <laughs> Promotional concert tour. Yeah, maybe Esther. I'll come to France. I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a deal. I'll come and I'll come and play for you and Florin if even if no one else wants to turn up, I'll be happy to. So we shall we shall do that. So yeah. Um there was something else that I was gonna say as well with that in mind. Um I'm trying to remember what it was now. Um I was talking about Canicapila, wasn't I? I'm terrible at um kind of Forget. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, I'm looking at um running some special sessions. Um, just talking about getting everyone together. Um, so, um, we I'm looking into something that I might call the Matt Stead Kickstarter course, and I'm just kind of I wondered if I could sound some of you out on it, see if you you would be interested. Um, it would be a residential course, a bit like we do at the retreat. This might sound like the worst thing in the world now, but um, you would actually just spend two or three days just with me. And I know, right, you know, I'm not a star name or whatever. I'm not uh, I'm not Jeff Peterson like we've got coming to our, for our retreat. But what I can do is spend a really intense learning period with you. And I've done this before in the past and students have really benef benefited from it. I've done day courses before, but I'm thinking about doing a whole weekend or a day course where we'll spend... Um, little sessions in a day really digging into things so we might have two hours in the morning we'll break maybe have a ukulele jam maybe one of my ukulele walks then we'll get back together another couple of hours maybe in the evening we'll do a little bit of performing to each other and a bit of jamming a bit of live can of capilla and things like that I'm thinking about just keeping it really small so it's like five to ten people at most so you can you know you're really part of it and you can ask loads of questions so if that's something any of you are interested in just let me know because I'd, I'd be really good to sound people out and, and just um, just let me know it would either be a day course or we could do a residential um, as well so yeah and it's a it's a road show. So if anyone or if all you American peeps fancy get me over there, I would love to. It's been ages since I've taught in America. Um maybe I could come over and do a couple of um couple of them out there. That would be really special, wouldn't it? And I get to meet you all and, and we do something. So just crazy ideas at the moment, but let me know, let me know if you're interested. So um yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> Yeah, she's quite used to it. I'm the same. I tend to work through my birthday. We've got a bit boring now we've got old. <laughs> we used to take time off and go and do things, but um yeah. But don't worry, I've I'm on the, I've already got a cake ready. She's had a present, so when I go home after this, I'm gonna get us a nice pizza and we're gonna have a we're gonna have the cake and everything with the kids. So 
Thanks, guys. I pass on your regards, guys. I really, really appreciate it. So, um, yeah. And it's my, my birthday in a month. I'm feeling very old this year. I'm not going to tell you the... Um, I'm not going to tell you <laughs> how old we are. But um, Sharon's exactly a, um, a month and a day older than me. It's the weirdest thing. Me and the kids all have our birthdays on the 9th of the month. Um, I won't tell you, I won't tell you our date of birth, that's too much information, right? But um, we're all ninth of a month, apart from Sharon, who's the eighth. Just weird, I just think weird universe happenings there. Right, anyway, I'm starting to ramble, so I'm going to head off. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, thanks again for all your company and all your support. I'll be back in another two weeks when we're going to have a look. Um, Esther, you probably guess what's coming next. We're going to have a look at playing the minor blues. So you'll know from my um, monthly challenge that I set on my Facebook page, we've been looking at doing the blues in different keys. And some people have been having a go at minor key blues. And I've got kind of, I've always had a bee in my bonnet about songs changing from major to minor. But then um, me and Esther recently, I, I gave her a lesson really digging into the minor blues. And it was really fascinating how interesting it could be, I think, hopefully Esther. So I thought it'd make a really good lesson for you guys. So in two weeks time, we're going to have a look at minor blues, how to really get the most of it in terms of feeling, soloing chords and everything. So that's coming up then. And of course, I'll be back on Monday for Canica Peeler as well. I'm excited for this next one. Got a real nice selection of songs. I won't spoil the prize, surprise, but you'll know by the end of the week. OK, everyone, well, take care. Thanks again for all your support. And we'll, we will catch up. You can and much love. Bye.